Hi everyone, welcome to this new video, which is about a very important topic, which is uh, cloud security governance, uh, what it is and how it helps you with regards to your cloud security posture. Now, uh, if you listen to my previous video on how to create a cloud security roadmap, so this is like a cloud complementary session, which builds on top of that. This video builds upon that previous video. So if you haven't watched that, do please go and watch that video also. So in my last video, you know, I went over the importance of having a cloud security roadmap for your organization to implement. So that way you can put like security in a phase manner and whichever model you're using, I mean, is it infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, uh, the importance of having a proper security roadmap, you know, you really can't underestimate it. But one key question remains, uh, what next? Okay, you've put in a roadmap, like you've gone to the end of this roadmap and you've implemented it. What happens after the roadmap is implemented? So that brings us to the topic of this course, which is why you need to have a proper security governance model in place. What it will do, it will put in a framework for maintaining your cloud security posture. So let's take a step back, guys. Before we talk about governance, we'll see why it's needed. Now, moving to the cloud side again and again, you know, it gives you a lot of awesome opportunities. Uh, faster response time, you can react to the world, you can be more agile, deliver products. You can give it like show return on investment to business much faster, especially nowadays in such a fast paced environment. It gives you so many benefits. But in spite of that, like, why do you think so many like uh, cloud security implementations fail? Like a lot of times you see that the people, they're not happy, then they go and they hire consultants or they hire a company that they, they, they couldn't do it in house or they did do it in house, but they're not happy with what they are seeing and they're not seeing that return on investment, which should be there. So there are a few reasons and this is based on my own experiences so far and, and as per some of the experts also. Some of the reasons that cloud security implementations fails are like this. And this usually happens, this guy which is pointing. That's usually how you see the CISO pointing towards you when he's not able to see that return on investment from a cloud security project. Well, one of the reason is you, people treat it like any other cyber security pro project, you know? The cloud is a different animal and a completely new way of doing things. So if you treat it like a project, what happens after a project finishes, right? You hand it over and like you forget about it. Unfortunately, that's a surefire way of having a data breach down the road. You have to treat the cloud as a separate environment and as critical as your on-prem one with the same level of governance that is required. So don't think it is like some application I've implemented and now I can forget about it. No, you need to really rethink the way you're doing things, okay? Uh, the second one would be is not formalizing responsibility. And it's quite, a, you won't believe how many times I've seen this. Like people do not formalize once a cloud environment is there, who will be responsible for patching, who will be responsible for monitoring. They assume that what was happening before is going to happen again. But a lot of times that those assumptions do not hold. Whether it's the provider, whether it's your internal IT teams, if you have ambiguity about who is doing what, this can be really like a huge problem uh, down the road. Make sure you have a formal and approved org, org chart, you know, which clearly, clearly says who is responsible for what. Uh, if you're planning on outsourcing that, make sure your org chart reflects that also. Uh, another one is not having a strategy or roadmap. I've already talked about having a roadmap and strategy, but yeah, you need to make sure that's aligned with your business strategy. Like, I mean, uh, if you want to have like a, a simple, uh, what do you call example, the cloud doesn't exist in a bubble, right? So you're, you're planning on implementing Azure controls and your management wants to move to AWS after one year. So you're going to, you're not going to see any return on the, all this investments you're doing. Okay. And lastly, another very important, and this is independent, whether it's cloud or on-prem management visibility. If you don't have metrics and KPIs, which are showing how well your cloud controls are performing, you will not be able to tell management how well these are performing and you will not see any return on investment. Uh, you might be able to get some, like uh, what do you call management approvals for new stuff. But when the, what do you call budgeting cycle happens again, management will believe me, they won't approve any other stuff because you never showed them how well uh, those controls are performing. If you don't have KPIs and metrics set in place. So these are the, some of the most common reasons why a lot of these control implementations fail. So now that we set this stage, now do you understand why we need uh, cloud security governance? Okay. Cloud can be, you know, a very unpredictable way and like a very, it can be a very unpredictable predictable environment. Things are happening so fast. That's why you know to have like things in place, a framework in place, which really helps you. So before we talk about what cloud security governance is, let's talk about what it isn't. Uh, it is not a uh, standard. Okay, first of all, it's not the PCI DSS standard. It's not the GDPR. Okay, it's not a standard which you get certified to. It's not a tool or a commercial product which you implement and then you say, okay, now I've done it. It's not a policy or a checklist. It's none of those things. Okay, so please don't think of it like that from that. It's, it is a discipline. It is a way of doing things 
a way of a discipline of doing uh, implementing things within your environment. So what do I mean by that? I'm not going to give you a long-winded textbook definition because those are boring. Cloud security governance, what it is, it is a formal management model. That a framework you put in place to make sure all your cloud security processes are working properly and working efficiently. This will be this is very critical, guys. You will not believe, like I've told you before, after the cloud is implemented, how many organizations are still confused? Are the controls working? Uh, who is doing patching? Who will report security breaches? This is why having a cloud security governance model is so important. You want to make sure those ambiguities are not there. And so, what are the key components? So now, okay, I've, I've said it's a framework, right? It's a management model, it's a framework. What are the key components? Well, first of all, now the level of detail may change, change depending from organization to organization. Some organizations, you know, they may be regulated by standards like NIST or PCI DSS, where you have a list of minimum controls to apply. I mean, Cloud Security Alliance also have some great, uh, what do you call, uh, the things about uh, how to go about implementing it as does AWS. But regardless of the organizations, I want to focus on the, some of the minimum components which will be same with the, regarding of which organization you're talking about, okay? Uh, one of the a formal cloud security policy approved by management, okay? I mean, that's pretty simple, guys. I don't think I need you to understand why you need to have it. And you won't believe how many organizations, they just put a paragraph in their information security policy and say, okay, this is now my cloud security policy. It doesn't work like that, guys. Please, you won't believe how many, or they just copy paste something from the internet. And all of those policies are pertaining to in-house, whereas their cloud environment is outsourced. So it really does not match with what your environment is. So have a proper policy in place which dictates uh, what it is, what the, and it sets the tone for everything which is coming after that. You need to have a proper organization chart which formalizes who is responsible for cloud security, who the bug, where the buck stops, who will be responsible for implementing technical controls, who will be auditing it, who will be reporting it. Okay, those things need to be there. Uh, you need to have KPIs, reporting metrics for senior management. So why? Because so they have visibility into cloud risks. So they have visibility into how well the controls are performing. Uh, what, what do you call how, how, Are they seeing the investment, the return on investment, all the money they've put into the cloud? Are they seeing that back? You need to have that. And of course, a roadmap, because you need to have that roadmap in place, which I've already talked about, and align it with your business strategy. You know what the business strategy is, so you can align it. So I hope you understand now what, what I was talking about. These are all, these things all come together to form a proper cloud security governance framework. Don't start from scratch. Uh, okay, so now that you understand, how do you go about it? Well, you don't have, the good thing is you don't need to start from scratch. I mean, if you have already implemented the ISO 27001, most organizations have, you just need to tailor it. Uh, one thing I would definitely recommend is the ISO 27017 standards. They, they build upon 27001 and they clarify, they, they implement, enhance you and they tell you about the cloud, right? Things which are not uh, uh, present in the previous standard. It really gives you a lot of controls new cloud controls, like who's responsible between the cloud provider and the customer, about the assets, about how you should separate your virtual environment, configuration. It's a really good standard, guys. Apart from that, COBIT from ISACA, it's very famous, you know, Control Objectives from Information and Related Technology. It's a framework created by ISACA about governance, and you can, uh, they have some very good publications about cloud governance also. You, you can adapt that if you want. Apart from that, there's one from the Open Group also. Uh, you can just look at it. They have some very nice cloud computing governance principles, which tell you how to go about and implementing it. So you don't have to start from scratch. Uh, don't get worried. It gets too overwhelming and I don't know how to do it. So guys, once you've done it, you will really, I mean, this is how your senior management look like. Apologies. I don't, if you're, I don't mean to insult senior management uh, that, that they're very old, but usually I'm just, I'm just talking about, this is the only picture I could find, unfortunately. So apologies for that. <laughs> but uh, this is how your senior management will be happy if you have this model in place and it's working. You will know who is handling cloud security, who is responsible. You will know how secure is your cloud because you will have metrics and key reporting going to management, right? Uh, you will know what the key risks are and your management will be seeing a return on investment also. So that's why it's so important and that's why you start seeing that, uh, what do you call return on value. So, okay, guys, I hope this was very uh, useful to you. Uh, please do the subscribe to this channel uh, so that you get notified and you get informed about new videos which are coming out. And uh, uh, thank you very much. Please do have, uh, let me have your feedback in the comment section. Thank you.